The last time we featured the America's Cup, it was just a few weeks ago, and the challengers were keeping the Russian Antonov cargo plane very busy, flying their second boats down to Auckland. From there, they went to their bases and started to assemble their new machines. And it was only a matter of days before they started rolling them out. And that's where the surprises started. First out on parade was American Magic's Patriot. They liked being first. After all, they were the first team to launch the very first AC-75. And here they were, leading the charge once again. We're here for the christening of American Magic Spoke to Patriot. In the name of the United States of America and the New York Yacht Club, I christen thee Patriot. May God bless this yacht and all who sail her. We were the first to do the mule, we were first foiling in an AC-75 and we are the first to launch boat two. Well, what I know is that you have to do your thing. You know, we've got a philosophy of, of the boat that we need and the boat we've produced. It's our interpretation of the best possible boat to take forward that way of thinking. You know, with a, a new design, new class, the, the rate of improvement is just it's so steep and uh, you know, we feel confident it's going to be a good step in the right direction. On the face of it, this boat looked rather similar to their first boat, but there were a number of subtle and maybe not so subtle differences. For a start, the new bow has more flair than the scale bow of boat one, and a skeg runs two thirds of the length of the hull. The shear line drops away more dramatically towards the stern, and the deck is a much more aerodynamic affair. And just look at that rudder. Long cord at the top for slow speed, skinny at the bottom for high speed. Wherever you look, this is a much more streamlined machine. The next boat to be launched took a lot of people by surprise as INEOS Team UK revealed their radical boat number two. Extreme barely does this boat justice and when the other teams are calling this boat extreme, you know something's going on. Apart from a very stylish paint job, of course the thing that really stands out is her long skeg, this aggressive, chunky centerline feature that runs right the way down the boat. It's more extreme than any of the other boats. But it's not just about that skeg. If you look carefully down towards the back end of the boat underneath, there's a sort of circular stepped area, which they're calling the bustle. There's no getting away from the fact that underneath she's a very complex boat with some really rather interesting twists and turns in her shape. But the overall concept is actually fairly straightforward. It's really all about making sure that the boat can break free from the water surface and accelerate quicker than anybody else. But that's what they're all trying to do. I think she looks amazing. It's the best looking boat I've ever seen. And I'm obviously biased, but I really do think that. And I you know, said to Nick, Holroyd, how proud he and the, the design team must be to have created something that looks that great. Of course, it, it looks fantastic. It's the important thing is how it goes, and, and we certainly hope that she goes like a rocket, just as she looks like a rocket. And so on to the third team to launch their new boat, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. And what a boat this is. It couldn't be more different to INEOS Team UK's Britannia 2 if you tried. It's smooth, it's sleek, it doesn't have a hard edge anywhere. In fact, it looks so smooth, it looks more like the hull and deck have been designed to fly rather than to be in the water, which is precisely the point. Aerodynamic drag is a big deal in the America's Cup world, and if you're still not really sure why, consider this. These boats will typically go round at about 30 or 40 knots, with top speeds in excess of 50 knots. If you want to know how much drag that represents and you've got a sunroof in your car, try standing out through the sunroof when you're going down the road at 60. On second thoughts, maybe not, but you get the point. It's a lot of drag and that all holds them back. So a sleek surface is absolutely crucial to reduce the windage on these boats. 
But it doesn't stop there. And the really interesting thing, I think anyway, about Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli's boat is that when you look at the shear line, you'll see this sort of humpback whale type shape as it goes aft. Look where the highest point is. It's back towards the sort of back third of the boat. Now look at the hull in elevation and consider that a wing. And it doesn't then take much to see how the upper surface of the deck is now acting as an aerofoil and lifting the boat out of the water, or at least contributing to that lift. And once that penny has dropped, that is the penny to do with aerodynamic shapes, and you look across all three of these boats that have been launched, there is evidence everywhere you look at just about every surface has been designed to create less drag and more lift. But aside from all the differences, there was one similarity across all three boats, albeit in rather different guises on each. And that's the skeg, that blade that runs from the bow down towards the stern along the centre line of the boat underneath the hull. What's it for? Well, it's all to do with making the boat more efficient, aerodynamically more efficient. This is how we think it works. You've got the sail plan, which we all know develops low pressure on one side and high pressure on the other, and that's sealed off down onto the deck. And so the air on the high pressure side is prevented from getting around onto the low pressure side and reducing the efficiency of that lower end of the wing because it's sealed down onto the deck. You see that with the mainsails. When you look at some of the shots from the back of the boat, you can see those mainsails, they don't have booms and a big gap underneath. They're sealed right down onto the deck to make them as efficient as possible. Now consider the boat lifting up out of the water. You've now got a gap between the bottom of the boat and underneath the boat, just at the critical moment where the boat needs as much power as it can possibly get to get up onto the foils as quickly as possible. And as that gap opens up and the high pressure spills through to the low pressure, you're losing efficiency in the rig at that crucial moment. So if you have a skeg and a blade down there, it maintains that seal as the hull starts to lift off the water, which in itself reduces drag and helps the boat to accelerate, whilst maintaining the aerodynamic efficiency underneath and making the boat accelerate quickly. The bottom line is the boat accelerates more readily and that is going to be key in this America's Cup. So what about the bustle on Ineos's Britannia 2? Well, that's quite a tricky one, but essentially it's all to do with the distribution of volume of the hull and reducing drag quickly as the boat starts to lift out of the water. As the boat starts to lift out of the water and the forward sections come clear and reduce all that drag, the boat is supported on the buoyancy of the bustle towards the back of the boat, which is a smaller area and you'll notice it's got hard edges on it as well, which suggests that there's a point at which the boat then breaks free and that resistance then drops as well. But whilst it might be a complex hull form, the concept of a bustle has been around since God was a boy. And finally, it's easy to underestimate just how much pressure and how much is riding on every aspect of an America's Cup campaign, not least of all at the launch. Those of us who are suspicious will know very well that for a bottle not to break at a launching is very bad luck. So spare a thought for Max Serena's wife, who had the unenviable task of having to break the bottle over the bow. that's not relief, I don't know what is. So with all three challengers now having revealed their second boat, the boat that they plan to take into racing, which starts on December the 17th, so it's not very far away, there's just one more team that we're waiting to find out about, the defenders, Emirates Team New Zealand. We'll let you know as soon as they launch their boat. Until then, stay tuned because there's plenty more coming on the road to the America's Cup. We'll